Second down into the rush. The ball comes free as he was hit by Juwan Simpson. And the Stampeders recover the football at the 27-yard line. The question will be what's an attempted forward pass by Kalaros. The officials are talking about it. And Scott Milanovic has the challenge flag in his hand. Yeah, Juwan Simpson, he's actually lined up right here over the left guard. And he's going to come in almost scot-free as Joe Appel just moves to his right and just doesn't pick him up. Now, was he in the throwing motion, Matt? It's tough to see there. But Sir Vincent steps in the way of us on that angle. And Milanovic elects not to challenge first down Calgary at the 27. Play fake to corners. Glenn with lots of time. Throws, and the pass is dropped by newcomer Ulrich Arnott making his CFL debut today. Take a couple more looks at the last play. Juwan Simpson making his presence felt. Unblocked, unabated to the quarterback. And I think Caleros was on the way back. He's, we call that dipping in the bucket. Watch the ball drop down. See how it goes way down like that? That gives Juwan Simpson an opportunity to come around, put his arm on top of Zach's, prohibit it from coming forward in a throwing motion, therefore the turnover. Third fumble lost by Calaros this season. Which one? Now on second and long, Glenn puts it underneath the corners. John Corbett's inside the 20, inside the 15 level. Calgary first down in the game at 12. Just a little middle screen. You don't see this too often, Gord. A lot of times you see screens with offensive linemen getting out in front of the running back on the outside of the interior tackle box here, but they're gonna go right in between the tackle box, and, and Kevin Glenn's just gonna shuffle this forward, and the corners can get some happy feet right here. Marcus Ball does a nice job of making tackle miss, and then corners picks up the first down. Stan Peters into the red zone. Toronto, the best red zone defense in the CFL. <laughs> First down carry goes to Cornish, stops short of the 11-yard line as middle linebacker Robert McCune back in the lineup for Toronto. Makes the stop. Did not play last week against Saskatchewan. Former Calgary Stampeder. Yeah, one of Chris Jones is, you know, Jonesy likes his players. Evidence, Demetrius Morley coming over, but that kid right there, Robert McCune, Jonesy just sat him down. There wasn't nothing in particular that was wrong with him. He was just giving him a rest because it's a long season and he's 34 years old doing the things that he's doing. Now on second down, Glenn to the end zone, Jabari Arthur, touchdown! And Arthur with his first touchdown reception of the season and the Stampeders have taken the lead. Tip for tat. Anybody, you can run a corner, so can I. Kevin Glenn throws a strike to the six-year man out of Akron. He goes up and gets it. Double covered, but Jabari Arthur had leverage on the outside. Glenn saw it, fed the ball out there. Beautiful looking play, well executed. His first touchdown catch in two years. And Paradis puts the point after up and through, and we're off to a quick start at Calgary. The Stampeders now lead by three in the opening court. Jabari Arthur hadn't caught a touchdown pass since midway through the 2011 season, in the regular season, that is. But the go-to man goes to the end zone. Yeah, he's on the inside right here, and he's not going to get a jam here, which gives him the opportunity to run the corner route and have leverage with the safety. Black coming over the top. And now he's in a no man's land. Ball spot on the outside. Kevin Glenn gets it there on time. Hey, Evidently. Happy birthday, Nathaniel, baby. I'm bringing the ball back for you. Talked to Jabari before the game. He was hoping for good things. And I think he re feels really confident with the uh, tutelage of uh, Nick Lewis playing like it. Trent Guy from the 10 yard line back in the Argo lineup and pushed down to 26. As Hustling down the field was Cordero Law, who doesn't just sack quarterbacks for a living, just smoked a kick return. <laughs> More you can do in the Canadian Football League. You're asked to do a lot, oftentimes. Jack of all trades. 
It's exactly the type of football game I'd expect between these two first place teams. Getting after it, trading blow for blow. First touchdown drive of the game traveled three yards for the Argos. Now they're at their own 27. And Darius Norwood, the first down carry at Norwood. Now it's about the 33 yard line. And Norwood, in a key situation last week, came off the bench for Chad Cackert when Cackert got hurt. At one point in the game, late in the fourth quarter, that six consecutive carries for 50 yards. And oftentimes you hear the guys talk, calling the game, saying that, you know, it's impressive when teams can run the football when the opposition knows you have to. It's exactly what Toronto did. Hats off to the big boys up front. But Jarius Norwood, Mississippi State product, getting it done. Now on second down, Polaris throws the wide side of the field. Andre Jerry with the catch and a first down. Forced out of bounds by Keon Raymond, a gain of six. Yeah, he caught that uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Probably picked up another eight yards. Why? Because he's the best yard after catch receiver player in the league with 488 coming into tonight, today's ball game. He's got leverage on Keon Raymond, takes it up around a six or seven. That's invaluable right there, turning second downs into first downs. And now back to the ground from Norwood, the first down carry across the 50 yard line. And a host of Calgary San Peters jumped up to make the tackle, including Jamar Wall from the defensive backfield and middle linebacker Juwan Simpson. Been pretty impressive with the Toronto Argonauts being able to plug and play running backs in their backfield. And this guy's no exception, Jerry Norwood. Chad Cackard out again after that hit from Tyron Brackenridge last week. And Brackenridge was fine this week for that hit to Cackard's head. Second long. Here comes the rush. Caleros under pressure and throws in the general direction of Norwood, but the pass is incomplete. That was a four-man rush for Calgary, and three of them got in. And when he talked to people about the pressure up front by the Calgary Stampeders, traditionally they'll get it done with these four players right up front. Little twist game, which I talked to Rick Campbell, defensive coordinator of the last couple days, and Rick does a lot of that, bringing people off angles and stunting, and not just playing a man on a man. We saw a little bit of a stunt there, applied pressure on Zach Kolaris. Wind's kind of died down for now, a low driving kick by Waters. Taylor takes it to the 35-yard line, and the special team's tackle was made by Jermaine Gabriel, but there's a mill yards flag on the play, and because Taylor took the ball on the fly, It'll be a 15-yard penalty, you think? Yes, it's exactly what it's going to be, Gordon. I guarantee it. Toronto, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. Mark Killam, special teams coordinator for the Stampeders, will take that every time with Larry Taylor in the conditions like today with the breeze and the winds gusting like you talked about. If you can catch a ball on the fly, you're going to save yourself a lot of field position and cause those opportunities there for no yards. Big play by Larry Taylor, although he didn't have to return the ball, but two yards. On first down, back to Cornish. And Marcus Ball steps into him as Cornish crosses the 50-yard line. Marcus is a gain of a couple. Cornish didn't play in the first matchup this year in Toronto. He was banged up, but the Calgary Stampeders Blitz the Argos in that one, 35 to 14. Knocked Ricky Ray out of the game. He's not returned since for Toronto. And a very impressive performance by the Calgary Stampeder. Yeah, and it was Williams and Walters that did the damage that day, and they kept the ball on the ground for 138 total yards and really got the job done controlling the line of scrimmage. Now on second and long, here comes the blitz. And Glenn got away from the first man, David Lee. Still on the run, throws to the sideline. One hops that to Jabari Arthur, and it'll be third down for the Stampeders, and Huffnagle won't be trying a field goal this time, even with the win, and Paradise is back. And Kevin Glenn talked about having his mobility back for this reason alone. He won't be able to do this and get away from David Lee, who had a beat on him, step up and elude the rush, and the loss. Good idea, he threw that one away. He's frustrated, but he's glad to have that mobility back. Now Rob Maver on to punt, averaging over 45 yards a kick. 
so far this season. Now the wind's kicked up again behind him. Pretty nice pass last week as well. And drives Guy all the way back to the goal line, but the ball went out in the end zone. A single point for Calgary, but not what Maber was looking for. This week at the CFL wraps up tomorrow as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders take on the BC Lions in Regina. G. Roy Simon, by the way, will face his former team for the first time in that game, getting a lot of attention this week. Travis Lule on the BC lineup. Lots to watch there, and the Calgary Stampeders will be watching that game closely to see who's making a move on them. And by the way, earlier today, the Hamilton Tie Cats with a win in the touchdown Atlantic game against the Montreal Alouettes, and Hamilton suddenly breathing down Toronto's neck for first place in the East. From the 35 yard line, Jarius Norwood on the carry, and Norwood out to the 44 yard line, and a gain of nine for running back that Harvard coach Scott Milanovic likes a lot. I thought he was outstanding and, and much needed, really. I mean, coming off the bench even, he wasn't the starter for that week. But uh, a guy that hasn't been with us for too long to, to be prepared and not getting any reps during the week, but getting himself prepared in case something happened to CAC, um, he could step in and, and do his job. And we all felt like he did more than that. He's, uh, he's been a great addition to our team. By the last week, 12 carries for 73 yards. A lot of the damage done in the second half. Second and short, Calero stays in and crosses the 45-yard line. Should have a Toronto first down. Ricky Ray is on the road with the Argonauts. They will actually stay in Alberta after this game. They'll remain here in Calgary until Thursday, then head to Edmonton for that game against the Eskimos. So Ricky Ray once again on the road with the team to provide some moral support and maybe some tactical guidance for Caleros. Yeah, and, you know, on the road like they are, why not? He's a coach on the field. The guy's been there, done that. Teach these young quarterbacks a lot. He's not having themselves away from the game, but they'll get between the lines. Should be the final play of the quarter. Calaros throws, and the pass is caught by Spencer Watt. Got to mark him down the 51-yard line for a gain of five. So a brisk opening quarter comes to an end. The Stampeders and Argos both take advantage of turnovers. Calgary leads by four after the opening 15. Back in Calgary, the numbers after the opening quarter, not a lot of offense, but at the bottom of that screen is a one turnover for each team, resulting in seven points. And Matt, very reminiscent of last year's Great Cup game when really turnovers decided the contest. Uh, absolutely, and both these teams are evenly matched, and I, I think it's a true testament. They're either both uh, tops in the divisions right now at 7-4, and 9-2, and two, is they take, care, they take care of the football and they capitalize on turnovers. We saw Zach Caleros capitalize on the Patrick Watkins pick, good field position, and, and, and all aspects of this football game played out with special teams play, solid with uh, Paredes making a long field goal to win at his back. We see a good, solid special teams play, solid defense and turnovers, and offense is capitalizing. Hard to remember a time when a team played four consecutive road games in football. Yeah, it's a beast. It's a grind. It's off to a tremendous start. You're going 2 0 so far. Now on second down from the 51 yard line, the pass for Dontrell Inman is dropped, and the Argos will have to punt. And Although Caleros got a lot of the heat for the poor first half last week, there were also a lot of penalties for the Argos and miscues. Yeah, and it's tough for a young quarterback to overcome those things, but he seems to find his way and settle down in those pressure moments, which we've talked about, and find a way to get it done. And when he settles down, it seems like he's so relaxed and then lets the game come to him and he just makes plays. Whoa, what a kick by Sweezy Waters. <laughs> he hammered that over the head of Larry Taylor. And the Argos will get one of their own. That's a 80-yard punt when it's all said and done. So here's what's happened so far in the opening quarter. Tip ball on McHugh. Patrick Watkins thinks he's got a walk-in. Capitalized right here. Nice corner route by Childs. Palaros finds him. Turnover here created by Juwan Simpson. Nice stun up front. Puts it in the end zone, Jabari Arthur from Kevin Glenn, spotting the ball out there, feeding it when nobody's at. Big slot, making a nice play. 
defense, helping their offenses hey, out hurry, in hurry, a field hurry. position style game. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But aside from the two scores off turnovers, not much to show for the two offenses so far. Now tossed to Cornish. And Cornish ran headlong into Robert McCune, the aptly nicknamed Hammer. Looks like they actually had Anthony Parker coming out yeah. the outside of John Corners for a possible option off the edge off of that handoff, which seems fairly convoluted and intricate, but it didn't work out too well for him. Brought back the single wing. Procedure, no end, Calgary. That penalty's declined, second down. And a game like this, which seems very choppy in the first quarter, and certainly defense laden, it's important for a veteran quarterback like Kevin Glenn, and certainly a young quarterback like Zach Kalaros, to let the game come to them and not force the issue. We've seen both of these quarterbacks throw the football away on several occasions now playing field position. They know how important that is. They pick the Cornish and toss to the other side, and Anthony Parker has the catch, but well short of a first down on a gain of six. And so the St. Peters will be forced to punt in the opening stages of the second quarter. Calgary's won four in a row last week, down 22-16 in the fourth quarter against Hamilton, came back to win that football game 26-22. Well, the, the Ticats might take a different view of it. Yeah, they felt like they might have given that one away, but I think Stan Peters felt like they took advantage of mistakes and created them. That was a well-played football game all around. Guy back to receive the kick and a good punt into the wind by Maver. Guy from the 20-yard line. Goes vaulting up across the 35 as he was tripped up by Rob Cote. And Guy injured on the play just back in this week. And kick returns have been a problem for the Argos since Chad Owens went out. So Guy up and walking. And the Stampeders on defense. We come back. Ricky Ray was having an outstanding season, maybe a most outstanding player type of season. We got hurt against Calgary yeah. in late August, sacked by Charleston Hughes and injured his shoulder. Likely not back until mid-October at the earliest. But I've heard through the grapevine that he's been throwing fairly comfortably lately. First down Argos from the 37-yard line. Polaro's looking over the top for Spencer Watt. And he was covered there by Fred Bennett as the ball sailed over his head. It was the first play of the second series of the game back in August in Toronto when Ray got hurt. He was 5 for 5 in the first series and threw a touchdown pass, and then that was his only completion. And his season came to a screeching halt right there. But it's good news out of Toronto, Argonaut land, that he has been throwing quite comfortably. I think he's ahead of schedule. His completion percentage was 78%. That's insane. Now Kalaros. Andrew Fisher throws. And they're going to rule this a fumble recovery by the Calgary champion. There's a first official said fumble. Now Al Bradbury, it is indeed Calgary football on a loss of nine. Now again, was he in the throwing motion? Well, Charleston Hughes is going to come off the edge. And he made a little spin move on the inside. Really nice against Sir Vincent. Rogers in. Well, this is nice. You set him up the outside, a little spin move, then you use your speed. You swat the ball. And again, Zach Caleros one-handed it. No ball security. That's why Scott Milinovich was on him at times in the last week's game against the Saskatchewan because of the ball security. And it comes out one more time, and Calgary Stampeders in great field position. Milinovich once again had the flag out, but decides not to throw it. First down, Calgary the 28. And Kevin Glenn is under pressure early on, gets away from it. And now throws complete to Arthur, who gets down to the 20-yard line. And a game of eight. Yeah, Kevin Glenn, a little Houdini act here in the backfield. Making people miss, extending the play. This is all of Zach Kolaris and what he does. 
Keontae Tripp can't get a beat on him. He gets up. Marcus Ball comes off the edge, but the ball's out, and he finds Arthur all by himself on the sidelines. Makes something out of nothing. And now second and short for Calgary. And Drew Tate, the short yardage offense, come on. The give to Cornish. And he drags David Lee for a couple yards, moves the sticks for a gain of three. Cornish with four 100-yard games so far this season. Last week, he became the second Canadian running back in CFL history to record back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. The other was Normie Kwong. He did it four consecutive times back in the 1950s. <laughs> First down from the 17-yard line. Flags are down. The ball is out. And Kevin Glenn quickly hopped on that. And the Stampeders are indicating that the Argonauts were offside. Offside, Toronto, number 12. Five-year penalty remains first down. Of interest more than the former Stampeder rather who's gone for being offside. And so now it's first and five for the Stampeders at the Toronto 12. Yeah, you can see Horton. He's going to try to shorten the edge. You can see Demetrius Morley come up here and apply pressure, and that's what disrupts the play. But they're caught offside in the neutral zone right there. But once again, Calgary's trying to take advantage of a Toronto turnover. Glenn back in the game. The gift to Cornish. Cornish down to the six-yard line. Marcus Ball. The tackle was a gain of six and another Calgary first down. And with Corey Sheets on the limp in Saskatchewan, John Cornish with a chance to make up some ground in the rushing race. Yeah, guaranteed he's well aware of where he's at in that race, in that contest, as well as Harris from BC. All backs are certainly motivated by that. I know wins come first. John Cornish certainly knows where he's at. He's got the opportunity to close some ground on the fabulous score sheets. First to goal just outside the five. Greg right to the goal line. Incomplete for Mark Wayne McDaniel, who has been coming to the play by Toronto's Ricardo Coakley. Mark Wayne McDaniel thought that he was being held by Ricardo, and he was begging for it. You saw Kevin Glenn throw it with timing. He's just a little out route, and you can see it right here. You can see it right here. And Kevin Glenn's got to get the ball out because it's timing. Bang, ball's thrown. Marquay didn't get his head around quick enough. But he didn't see the ball whip by a space back. Second and goal from the five. Glenn under pressure throws, and the pass is caught. Sinopoli down to the one-yard line. And now third and goal from the one for Calgary, and the short yardage team comes on quickly for the Stampeders. Yeah, you know when you go back in the video room, film room the next day, you can watch Marquay McDaniel. He's going to come underneath here. He's going to hit Sinopoli coming right here, sitting in this area. But all along, coming the other way, Kevin Glenn gets off of Marquay coming across the field, and nobody goes with him. He's sitting there all by himself for an easy walk-in touchdown. It's easy up here, Gore, but down there where there's mayhem going on oftentimes you just don't see it because you're blocked out by the big boys up front third and goal from the one and tate close touchdown the second effort got him there and once again calgary takes advantage of a toronto turnover to put a touchdown on the ball I think it's just Drew Tate's want to and desire to get in the end zone. He's going down the line of scrimmage looking for a little tiny hole, a little crease, something. Give it to me. Wilson and Jemai Dean are getting it done. Keep moving their big legs. And a good throw by Tate at the end. His arm looks okay. Yeah, you know, it just... John doesn't want him to play, actually, in reality until October, yet he's going in those situations, playing in the most... Violent plays that there are in football, those short yardage scenarios. And then he wings it like that. I know Huff is probably going to have something to say about that. Drew Tate with a one yard touchdown and a fling to a fan afterwards to extend the Toronto, the Calgary battle to 10. 
Tate Diggins is locked watching very intently, knowing they want to capitalize on this turnover, and he gets it. It's about as much reaction you get from Diggins. Relatively calm on the sidelines, but I know he's a fierce competitor. Certainly, one, certainly was one when he played. A tremendous offensive line getting it done with three different quarterbacks on a regular basis here in Calgary. So Calaros has fumbled the ball twice in the game. And both above the Calgary touchdowns. Now Perrin has put that way up in the air. And this ball fielded by the Argos Herve Tonya Tonya, the linebacker. And he brings it up to the 45 yard line, which is where Toronto will start as Caleros goes back to work. So he's thrown interceptions each of the last four games with a more concern. He's lost four fumbles so far this season, two this afternoon. His completion percentage is at 68%, eight touchdowns, three interceptions. He's four for nine today for 20 yards so far. Take a step on there, it's a win. Kids find a way to get it done. Play fake, Caleros throws, the pass is caught. No, it's not, the ball comes out. And for the second time in the football game, Dontrell Inman can't hang on. Well, he extended for it too, going across the middle on a dig route or a seven. And he's gonna come left to right.